wherever you go, people will always cook and people will always prepare food and people will always prepare food with great attention. And the more dire the situation is, the more you pay attention to the spices and the food and the way you cook. Just because you are in living through a war or a tragedy or trauma um, or are poor doesn't mean you don't cook and pay attention to food. So that was really important. And it was then something to balance the horror of what we're saying with something very practical that you will always come back to as a human being. Um, and in this case, this woman who then obsessively cooks because that is her way of being in touch with Syria and with this man she's fallen in love with. Um, is felt like absolutely the right thing to do. I think otherwise the show would be unbearable. You would just kind of go, oh, I can't hear this. So, but because it has, and because of course in the show you have all the smells which everybody in the audience talked about. You have the onion, the smell of onions, then you have the smell of the spices, which is very strong. And you, people get drawn instantly into a space, into a, a play. Um, I know that the, I have the audience with me as soon as the smells come and the cooking, because people are, uh, feel at home in some strange way. So, so it was important to do that. We had long discussions with Amir about, he said the cooking is accessory, what's important is the text, and he's a writer. And I said, no, 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 I think the cooking is more important than the text. So I think now we've got a balance of, you know, text and cooking. It's about the stories of people. And if we can, for an hour, put people in touch with other people's stories, through something as beautiful as cooking, then already that's enormous. If we achieve that, that's an enormous achievement.